participating guest is a licensed clinical social worker and health coach. She is certified as an integrative cancer navigator, and she has a private clinical therapy practice specializing in, in oncology. Um, she also deals with people who ha are in treatment and post-treatment survivorship issues. In addition to her practice, she is actively involved in advocacy work through her affiliation with other um, organizations and with the Ovarian Cancer Alliance. She is a survivor of um, endometrial cancer and has Lynch syndrome. She has particular interests in educating the community and general public of the risks involved in Lynch syndrome. Thank you so much for coming to the show, Kathy. Welcome. Thank you, Grace. It's really nice to be here and to have you invite me here. You're welcome. So tell me more about um, Lynch syndrome and how it has affected you. So Lynch syndrome is a inherited genetic mutation mm -hmm. similar to like the BRCA genes that people know a lot about. Right? They, uh, but Lynch syndrome, unfortunately, most people don't know much about it, but it is what they call a mismatch repair gene, mm -hmm. which means that, you know, our DNA always is repairing itself. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and this is a, a piece of the DNA that should be repairing damaged cells that doesn't work. That doesn't work. It doesn't work right. So what happens then is it predisposes you to a number of different kinds of cancer. Okay. So all the time in our bodies that we're not aware of is going on where there are, there are viruses that we're exposed to. There are cancers that we're exposed to that, that our cells, our DNA knows how to get rid of. That does not happen efficiently with, uh, with people with Lynch syndrome. So consequently, uh, we are exposed to about seven or eight predisposed to about seven or eight different types of cancer. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you in descending order, um, which, what cancers are we are more um, likely to be at risk for. Um, the first is uh, colorectal cancer, mm -hmm. that, which they say that about 80% of people who have Lynch syndrome could potentially experience colorectal cancer in their lives. Oh, wow. The next, yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot. Now, I have seen those numbers come down a little bit in terms of the percentages. So I've also seen numbers that say 65%, but it's somewhere, it's high, mm -hmm. it's high. Um, and the next is endometrial cancer or uterine cancer, which is what I had, um, ovarian cancer, stomach cancer, uh, cancers of the bile duct, cancers of the urinary tract, pancreatic mm -hmm. cancer, skin cancer, brain cancer. I think that's all of them. Okay. Uh, Breast. Now they're linking breast. Oh, wow. Breast yes. too. Mm -hmm. Yes. In the last few years, in fact, I went to a conference about eight years ago, a Lynch syndrome conference. Dr. Henry Lynch is the person that actually like identified this, this uh, genetic mutation. And mm -hmm. he was still alive then and was at the conference. And he kept saying, everybody needs to look at the breast, look at the breast. He said, I'm telling you, we're going to figure out there's a connection with breast cancer too. And sure enough, in the last couple of years, that has been uh, identified. It's not as um, talked about mm -hmm. with Lynch, but, uh, but anytime I work with anybody who's got breast cancer in their family, and let's say they say they have pancreatic cancer in their family, there are some of these random uh, cancers, then I suggest they get some genetic testing done. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. It's it's crazy because, you know, when I had put up our post on LinkedIn, you know, like about 90% of, of, of my contacts, of my, you know, um, connections had mm -hmm. never heard of Lynch syndrome. And they were like, what is that? And wow. um, yes, it's true because, it, you know, it's, it's not frequently spoken about, right. you know, until and, you yeah, had this, um, you know, you brought it up, you know, to mm -hmm. me and I try to educate myself, but I said, I have to bring you on, you know. <laughs> well, here's the thing mm -hmm. about the statistics are that about one in every 279 people has Lynch and doesn't know. And 95% of the people who have it don't know that they have it. 
And that's yeah. way higher than the BRCA genes for breast mm -hmm. cancer. Mm -hmm. the, mm -hmm. And you know, part of the problem with that is, is that the doctors don't know enough either about it. So I can't tell you how many times I've had to uh, say to a doctor, uh, I have Lynch syndrome, and they will say, what's that? Wow. Mm -hmm. Imagine that. Seriously? Mm -hmm. They Seriously. don't know. Yeah. Oh. And if they don't know, how is how are we supposed to, you know, mm -hmm. how are we supposed to know? Exactly. Yeah. So is it something that our, our doctors being like what you do? Anyway, we'll come to that because there's honestly, there's just so much. So yeah. <laughs> how how has this actually, how did you get this diagnosis and how has it affected you? How did it affect you really? Okay. Well, I got the diagnosis. Well, first of all, let me back up. My mom had colon cancer three mm -hmm. times. Wow. One when she was in her 50s one when she was in her 70s and at that point so and when she was diagnosed in her 50s they didn't know about Lynch syndrome when she was diagnosed in her 70s they did know and she met with a genetic counselor when and then she had it again in her 80s and that actually is why is she passed away from that third that third uh, bout mm. of colon cancer i always assumed that i would at risk for colon cancer. Now, I will tell you, my mom was, I have two brothers. My mom was very, very on us, you know, about getting tested. Mm -hmm. I did not want to because I'm self-employed and I was concerned about at some point having to get health insurance and knowing that I had Lynch syndrome and not being able to get any insurance. And I knew that I had to keep an eye out on my, um, my colonoscopies, I started getting them started getting screened in my 30s. And I really, um, you know, my gynecologist knew about everything. So I felt like I was doing everything I could mm -hmm. getting the testing done. I, like I said, was really, you know, had in my mind figured at some point I was going to see colon cancer. My father also had colon cancer. Oh, he wow. never, yeah, he never had a reoccurrence and we, he was never tested for Lynch syndrome. So, and he passed away. I don't know whether he had it or not as well. Mm -hmm. But I just assumed with two parents having colon cancer that that's what would happen with me. And instead had uh, endometrial cancer. So what yeah. happened is I went for my annual gynecological checkup and my uh, pap smear came back uh, abnormal. And I went every year. I was good about keeping up with my you know, with my medical checkups and stuff. So mm -hmm. it was surprising to me. And then as soon as I met with the oncologist, he said to me, does anybody else in your family have, can't have, have they ever had cancer? And I went, oh gosh. Oh, yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm a great example of pers a person who had the information and still do it right. <laughs> You know, absolutely. I this 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 happens all the time, mm -hmm. you know. So we really yep. cannot beat ourselves up. This happens all the time, you know. Yeah. So um I wanted to ask, so it was there they saw you had this, and then did you go for the test? Did you go for a yeah. test to find out yeah, about that you had? Okay. Yeah. For this diagnosis to come, not the endometrial. I mean, for the Lynch syndrome Lynch. diagnosis. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. As soon as I said, you know, when he asked me that and I said, oh, my mom has Lynch syndrome. And he mm -hmm. said, you need to get tested. Okay. So. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, and honestly, Grace, at that yeah. point, I already had a cancer diagnosis. So my fear of insurance issues and, yeah. you know, we're, we're a moot point, you know, at that point, because I had cancer diagnosis. So if I'm going to have problems getting health insurance, mm -hmm. I was going to have problems getting health insurance because I had cancer at that yeah. point. So, yeah. So I had, you know, I had to get tested. Okay. Oh, tested I'm so too. sorry about that. So um, what were, did, were there any symptoms aside the endometrial cancer? Were there any other symptoms to alert your I mean even though your mother you know had it mm -hmm. what were did, did were there any not noticeable signs or symptoms that the, yeah you had the then? only thing I can say is that when I went for my annual gynecological checkup my mm -hmm. doctor at that point I was in my early 50s and my doctor said would ask me every year. So are you still getting your period? Are you still getting your period? So no. um what are the uh, 
you know, like I, I, when I was trying to come up with the questions, you know, I'm like, okay, mm -hmm. I'm putting myself in, in your shoes now. What challenges have you, have you, have, have you had any challenges since oh, yeah. that initial diagnosis? What are mm -hmm. they, if I may ask, please? Well, so the thing with Lynch syndrome is that in order to prevent, you have to do a lot of surveillance. Mm -hmm. So in order to prevent any kind of cancer from developing or catching it quickly, mm -hmm. you, you have to do a lot of surveillance. For instance, and the biggest one is I have to have a colonoscopy every year. Oh, wow. So, every year. Every year. Not like every five years. Every oh, no, year. No, no, no. Every year. Oh, every wow. year. And an endoscopy every two years. They do those at the same time when I get it done. But the, mm -hmm. the and most important piece of this is that Lynch syndrome polyps in the colon grow differently. Most polyps actually are like a stalk. Like if this is, if this is the, you know, the lining of the colon, mm -hmm. this, they kind of grow up as stalks. So when you have a colonoscopy, if they see one, they go in and they, sh they just shave it off. Yes. Lynch syndrome cancers grow much closer to the wall of the colon. They're harder to detect mm -hmm. and they grow much quicker. Oh, they, wow. uh, so because they grow so quickly, they, um, you have to be checked all the time. It's not like, you know, when they say, if you go for a regular colonoscopy and there's no history in your family and they say, well, you had one polyp, we took it off, it, you know, yeah. we'll test it, but it comes back benign, you need to come back in three to five years, depending mm -hmm. on the doctor and what they recommend. No, 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 no. That's not the case for me. Every year. Oh, wow. Every year. Yeah. So when people whine about their prep for their colonoscopy, I'm like, please get, you know, it's, it's not that big a deal. It's mm -hmm. fine. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm, and I will tell you that out of the 10 years that I've had these every year, I only once did I come back with no polyps. Oh, only wow. once. all the time you have had mm -hmm. polyps. Now they have not been cancerous because they catch them quickly. Mm -hmm. But that's the reminder. And that's why I'm saying this. And that's you. why I it's think, good. It's annually, you know, because um, if I didn't, Oh, no, that would be something quickly, else. Yeah. So ev almost ev last year was the first time that she said uh, there's you were all clear. Okay. But that's just generally not the case. And I think to myself every time I think like, oh, I hate getting I hate doing this every year. Then I think, well, you know what? If I didn't, I probably would have had colon cancer by now. Mm -hmm. So there is a lot of value in being in having that screening all the time. There is. Absolutely. Yeah. So I have to do that every year. I have to do, so there's a lot of, I have not much freedom from doctors because mm -hmm. I have to do that every year. I have to do uh, a skin cancer screening twice a year. I have to do a um, urinary tract uh, screening every year to make sure I'm not, I don't have any cancer cells growing in my urinary tract. Mm -hmm. I have to do, well, there is something else too, skin, colon, uh, endoscopy not brain not no uh, there's no okay. way to screen okay so mm. here's the thing pancreatic brain two scary things right yes there's no way to screen safely you know they're not gonna do an mri of your brain every year just to see if there's mm. anything going on mm. and pancreatic as you know i'm sure mm -hmm. is a tough one to find it is yeah so, my uncle had it and we didn't know until he passed away and mm -hmm. until he lost so much weight that you know it was not obvious and when he went for you know um tests and all that they realized that it had far gone so it's true yeah. that yeah it's really hard it is mm -hmm. hard yeah hopefully hopefully they will come up with a better screening test for that over time but so mm -hmm. far not much mm -hmm. yeah so, so what does the screening for lynch syndrome entail if you're doing the genetic testing, yes, blood blood work, or now actually when I had it done, it was blood work. Now I think it's a spit test. A saliva it's what? Test. A spit test. An oh, spit. A saliva yeah. Test. Oh, saliva. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's yeah. that's so it's, wonderful to know. It's, yeah, it's really easy to do. Okay. The, the problem is you got to get your insurance company to pay for it. Does it cost a lot? No, it's not. It's well, it depends on how you look at it. It's not thousands of dollars. It's probably a couple hundred dollars. Okay. Is it cost sharing? Because, you know, a lot of these things, people kind of, you know, think and say, oh, okay. Um, 
one has to have deep pockets to do all these right. tests and and so they delay or abstain from doing exactly. those necessary tests you know mm -hmm. so that that's what i'm asking for anyone that is listening to this you yeah. know it is that cost sharing or is it, it can be okay it can be so like for instance when i had my testing done because mm -hmm. i had a cancer diagnosis that was not an issue mm -hmm. for me i it was paid for by my health insurance when my children got tested, they they initially denied it. Insurance wow. denied it. And they said, well, there's no reason for it. And I said, yes, there is. There, because I have Lynch syndrome, they they need to know whether they have it. And they said, oh, okay. And then they did. They approved. It. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. You may have to fight for it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But if, there's, if there is, now here's the problem again. If there is a known history or diagnosis of Lynch syndrome, or you already have cancer, you know, then you can get it. But if you just say, you know, I want to get this testing done, I'm not sure they would pay for it. Yes. I think you'd be assuming that cost. I I, I, I understand that. Yeah. Yes. Because for anybody listening or uh, watching us now would mm -hmm. want to know, you know, okay, um, this is the call to action, but you know, how are we going to pay for it? It's, it's insurance going to cover. These are things that are so... Yeah pertinent when we're trying to stay on this side of the divide you know exactly money, exactly money mm -hmm. yeah yeah oh, and, wow well and unfortunately most people don't find out that they have lynch syndrome till they already have cancer mm -hmm. because it's so uh so few doctors really understand that what's going on with it and and understand how to pick it up mm -hmm. and, and recommend that someone go for testing Yes. You know, it's oftentimes you have to have a doctor who understands all of those different cancers and how to connect the dots. Yes. 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 Ex yeah. Exactly. And, um, you know, a doctor that and and for you, the patient, us as patients have to be knowledge knowledgeable about these kind of things that mm -hmm. we have the right to ask, because if we don't ask the the, the doctor will not know that we know and may not even know that he should know about it as well to be able to exactly. share the information yeah. with other patients because i'm sure mm -hmm. we're, we're very few people would ask their doctor for a lynch sy syndrome screening you know i don't think they would even know to ask voila you know most so the primary care physicians i think are crucial in this because once you get to a place of a, seeing a specialist you mm -hmm. most likely it's because you have cancer. Yes. You know, you get to an oncologist like I did, or you mm -hmm. get to, you get to your GI doc and they find it. But yes. if, but if there's, you know how, when you like, again, for breast cancer, this is much more clear. Mm -hmm. You know, it, if, if your primary care doctor asks you, which, you know, how you fill out these forms and it says, has anybody in your family had heart disease? Has mm -hmm. anybody in your family had a stroke? How about cancer? A primary care doc needs to be able to say, had endometrial cancer, her grandfather had colon cancer, somebody had pancreatic cancer, someone needs to know that these are all yeah. part of a Lynch profile. And oftentimes that's where that education for the primary care doc mm -hmm. to be able to say, you know what, this could be, could be a, a profile for someone who has Lynch syndrome. Mm -hmm. So I am going to send you to, uh, for a genetic counseling appointment. Mm -hmm. recommend that for you and then they can go from there to try to see whether or not you should be screened or not but i mm -hmm. think if the primary care docs don't see don't know these different cancers and how they they you know actually are part of this list uh, linked now, yes they're not they're going to miss it and and then generally speaking you're going to end up with someone who's a cancer survivor, not a cancer previvor, mm -hmm. you know, and that's my hope is, is that if there's more education about this, that on both the medical level and on, on our, you know, on our part, yes, to even know to ask for it or look for it, then, you know, I think my hope is that there'll be less people diagnosed with cancer because yes, the screenings every year are, are not fun. And yes. here, there's, you know, there's something to be said for getting those screenings. Absolutely. So I'm um, talking about education now, because I know you're doing a lot as regards that trying to 
um, you know, let the medical professionals know and patients. What is it that you have been doing to, you know, kind of heighten awareness as regards this, please? Well, as a, as a, what I do work wise is that I am a clinical social worker. And, uh, and when I am, and a majority of my, um, my clients are dealing with cancer in some mm -hmm. form or another, either they're, they're just diagnosed or they're in the middle of it, or they're dealing with survivorship issues. But mm -hmm. so if I visual level, if I'm working with someone, and as I said to you that, you know, that they tell me like, oh, like you just said, my, you know, it was your uncle that had mm -hmm. uh, pancreatic cancer. Yes. And if, if someone says those kinds of things to me, then I will say, I, I, you probably don't know anything about Lynch syndrome and I'm not saying you have it, but I am saying you should talk to your doctor about it. Mm -hmm. uh, so on that level, that's what, you know, individually, you know, on the micro level and working with clients, that's what I'm doing. Yeah. I just attended the American Association for Cancer Research uh, annual meeting as a um, member of the Scientist Survivorship Program. Mm -hmm. And I had to present a uh, poster. And so my poster was all about Lynch because I want, you know, I'm just trying to talk, talk, talk about it to get. Which is fantastic. You know, people yeah. have to know. Yeah. In, in my wildest dreams, what I would really like is to develop a program that educates primary care docs. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so that they get more baseline education to help their patients. Mm hmm yeah, that, that's very that's very important. It um, is even for the upcoming a kind of should I say curriculum for the upcoming yep. medical professionals, um, mm -hmm. because you know the healthcare evolves, mm -hmm. you know all the time. Yeah. So the newer um, interns or residents and, oh, and everything, right. you know, mm -hmm. should you know start from there before they actually leave those settings to be able to have that instilled in them so that they do better than their you know you're, yes older you're people. very you're very right about that grace because i uh when i've talked to people young people who are in med school or just finished med school or doing their residencies and ask them about whether they've heard of lynch syndrome they said yeah, I think so. I think they said, you know, basically five minutes about it in their mm. medical training. <laughs> Not much. Yes. No. It's, it's just glossed You're over. Right. It hasn't. Yeah. So um, I think you would do wonderfully there, you know, starting from Yeah, it's scratch. a great idea. Yeah. Yes, you know, before they get out and, you know, um, mm -hmm. the whole mm -hmm. medical thing becomes... You know what yes. I mean? No, you're you know, right. like I a crown. Right. They should know the basics. That would be nice, honestly. Yeah, it would, it would really be important. That's you're right. Fantastic. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. Great place to start. So um, as regards your um, personal perspectives, you've been doing so well trying to, you know, carry your um, experience forward, um, mm -hmm. talking to healthcare professionals and also talking to, you know, your clients who will share because this thing is like uh, dominoes, you know, having it the is. domino effect. I'm so happy that we were able to put that on LinkedIn today and, you know, <laughs> The questions I've been getting, you know, people cannot wait to see this. And I'm sure that they will also be, you know, Googling, Googling or going into health websites to find out mm -hmm. more about it. You, you know, mm -hmm. yeah, that, yeah. That, that's good. Can I say one thing about that? Please too? do. Even if like if you Google the BRCA genes, mm -hmm. you'll get a, a lot of websites that mm -hmm. are with the hereditary issues of breast and ovarian cancer. Mm -hmm. If you Google Lynch syndrome, there are maybe four or five. I know. Even what much. the NIH has, because my mm. friend shared the NIH, it, it wasn't as much as, yeah. you know, even the other cancers. There was, yeah. you know, um, mm -hmm. so yeah. with what you are doing and if we can assist in any way in pushing this already we're, we're trying to do this because I loved that you you know you said Grace let's talk about Lynch syndrome you know yeah. and I, <laughs> I I was so happy you 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 brought it up and I I also went and did my homework to know more you know mm -hmm. and um, is there anything you would like to tell you know to share with the audience you know some hope some wisdom nuggets as to I you do know, what to what to do so one thing i want to say is that they are in the process of developing a vaccine 
mm. for Lynch syndrome. Superb. Mm-hmm. In fact, they are at the point now where they are doing uh, human uh, trials, you know, mm-hmm. and they are, I think it's going to happen. And I think it's going to happen in the next couple of years. Fabulous. So, yes. Yes. And that is really hopeful. And that would be for people who are pre-vivors and mm-hmm. people who are survivors. So I would be eligible to get the vaccine. I um, would be eligible too, as a cancer survivor as well. Yeah. 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 So I think that's really important. And I mm-hmm. want that to get out there too. Yes. You know, that, that people know that that's available. And the other thing is, is to really, really, really don't miss your checkups. Mm-hmm. That is, that is, I would say the most, one of the most important things. I think it saved my life because yeah. if I had not had my, been on top of my, um, my own uh, gynecological checkups every year, and I had a great doctor who would not let me uh, get out of the office without scheduling that biopsy. And I tried to get out of the office without scheduling it. Mm-hmm. And she walked me to the front desk and she said, Kathy needs to schedule a biopsy. Wow. Yeah. Thanks to her. Thanks her to insistence. her. Yes, mm-hmm. absolutely. Yep. So don't, 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 you know, if you're due for a colonoscopy, get it. If you're due for your, you know, your pap smear, get it. Um, and I actually, my feeling, this is my personal feeling. Sometimes now they're moving with, uh, with pap smears to as pe- postmenopausal women, they're not necessarily recommending pap smears every year. Mm-hmm. I tell people to get it anyways. If you have to pay for it, pay mm-hmm. for it if you can afford to. But, you know, it's I if they had done that with me, I would have gone a whole nother year, assuming mm-hmm. I did not have symptoms. Yes. I would have gone a whole nother year before I, and that cancer would have been growing in me. Mm-mm-mm. Yeah. And my my outcome would have probably been very different. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much, Kathy. I'm you honestly welcome, so please. exhilarated about the vaccine because that would be like a one-stop shop. Just I know, you know, out with it, you know, yeah. and deal with it. Yeah, yeah, I know. It would. It, I mean, I really hope that all ends up being um, uh, positive and that mm-hmm. it's usable and that people can get them and starting hopefully in the next couple of years. Absolutely. So. Yeah. Thanks, Grace. I really thank you so I much, really Kathy. Appreciate it. Really wonderful for you to come, you know, take time to come, you know, during well, and, your crazy sh- uh, schedule. <laughs> <laughs> well, and thank you for highlighting this because the yes. more, I mean, honestly, one of the most important things we can do is keep talking about it, Absolutely. having conversations about it. So people go, Oh, I've never heard of that. What yes. is that? And you know, they Honestly, get on the computer. The, the um, feedback I got, even in my inbox, so mm. this this show is going to be up very soon and you know we'll share it and you'll see the outcome. Yes. Yeah, great. Great. Thank you for what you Thank do, you. Kathy. God Thank bless you. you. I really appreciate and it. We must stay in touch. We have to collaborate. Okay? Okay. Yes. All right, good, darling. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. Have a good evening. <laughs> Thanks. Bye-bye, you dear. Too. Bye. Thanks. Bye.